this is Earth and this is our home. But as an explorer species, human beings always tend to think of a new place to call home and a new world to explore. The quest for finding such home is actually the main emphasis of the modern research when it comes to astronomy and astrophysics. And although planets like Earth have been actually discovered, these planets usually reside in orbits that are way too close to their home star and would usually cause the planet to be a little bit too hot for comfort. And this is of course until last year. In 2014 we've discovered a planet called Kepler-186f that is officially known as Earth-like extrasolar planet that may one day become our new home. In today's video we're going to be using Space Engine and Universe Sandbox 2 to talk about Kepler-186f and also possibly colonize and terraform it as well. And welcome to What the Math. <laughs> And before we use Universe Sandbox 2 to try to terraform Kepler-186f, let's reach it using a Space Engine just so we can see what it looks like. We're going to go into Space Engine and type Kepler-186, which is the name of the star, and you can see there's actually um, five different planets orbiting that particular star. And here it is. So this is Kepler-186f. This is what's called a red dwarf. It's a star that is actually much smaller than the sun and has a lot less luminosity than the sun and is at a distance of approximately 490 light years away. In other words, the light from this star takes about 490 years to reach our planet. Now, unfortunately, this star only produces about 4% of the, uh, the same amount of luminosity and energy as our sun does. But nevertheless, this star might be enough for it to actually uh, have an Earth-like planet around it. So here, if I, if I click on this button that shows me all of the objects in the solar system, you'll notice that there is five different planets around it. They're all named Kepler-186 and it's B, C, D, E, F. There's no A, unfortunately. And so let's actually accelerate time just to see how they orbit around the star. And you'll notice that um, four, uh, four planets, uh, B, C, D, and E, orbit really fast. They're actually really, really, really close to the star. But the fifth planet, Kepler-186f, which is right there, is a little bit farther away. It's actually in the region around the star known as the habitable region. It's the region where it's very likely that the temperature and the pressure on the surface of the planet might be enough for it to sustain liquid water. And that, of course, is a really good sign for us. Anyway, let's actually slow down time for a second and look at each of these planets individually. So we're going to start with Kepler-186b. And you'll notice that even though it's a very beautiful planet, it is very, 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 very hot. It's 577 degrees Celsius on the surface, which is sort of similar to the temperature on, on top of Venus. And the surface here looks just like this. This is obviously simulated. We don't really know if this is what it really looks like. This planet is probably very, very hot and it orbits around this star uh, every four days. So one year on this planet is only four days long. And here's Kepler-186c, and once again, this is relatively hot, it's about 250 degrees Celsius, so no way there is a liquid water on this planet. And it, it does look quite beautiful and quite unusual from the distance, but if you approach it, you'll notice that it kind of looks like a big desert. So this is a very highly scorched planet that very unlikely to have any liquid on it, and might, uh, might be covered with a lot of really hot rocks and possibly even molten metals on the surface. So let's uh, escape this planet and go to the next one called Kepler-186d. And this is the third planet and it's about 300 degrees Celsius. You can kind of see from the surface that it's going to get really hot there. And it does look a little bit too hot. Uh, the atmosphere here is relatively thick, but we, obviously we don't know if this is exactly what it looks like. But it, there is a very likely chance that all of these four planets uh, that we're going to be exploring now are actually terrestrial planets as well, just like our Mercury, Venus, and uh, Mars. And so this is what uh, Kepler-186d looks like from a surface and from a distance. And now we're going to go to the second farthest planet called Kepler 186e. Now this planet takes about 22 days to orbit around this, uh, around its uh, parent star. So this is about one year would take it 22 days. 
and the temperature here is about 70 degrees Celsius. So it's uh, it might not actually be hot enough for the water to, to evaporate, but it will still be a little bit too hot for us to feel comfortable on, on it. So um, because it's relatively close to the sun, it's actually out just outside of the habitable region around that star. So this planet, even though it might have some water, uh, that water might be ridiculously hot on it, and it's very likely to actually not be terraformable and possibly be quite dangerous to live on as well. But this is such a beautiful place to, to visit though. And lastly, here is Kepler-186f. Now, there's actually competing theories about what this planet might be like, but we know that it's uh, somewhere around the size of our planet Earth. It's uh, plus minus 10% in terms of um, radius. And that means that its mass might be as light as 30% uh, mass of Earth if it contains just water. So essentially what you, what you see right here is this is just a liquid planet. This is all just water. There's nothing but water here. Or if it contains more metal and if it contains more silicates, more rocks, it might be uh, much heavier than Earth, up to three times heavier, three times more massive than Earth. And if the surface of this planet is water-like, uh, this might be a water world, which means that we, if we're going to colonize this planet, we might have to bring some sort of floating uh, colonization modules, but it's also very likely to be silicates, and we won't be able to discover what it actually contains until sometime in the future when we develop telescopes that are able to actually distinguish the materials um, of these extrasolar planets. And so now let's go into Universe Sandbox 2 and take a look at it in the simulation that is in that game and also try to colonize slash terraform it. And to get into Kepler system, we're going to go into open right here and just type Kepler. And here we go, Kepler-186 system with the Earth-like planet. And you'll notice that it right away shows you the habitable zone as green. Then there's the red part, which is too hot to, for life and for water. And blue is too cold for life and for water. All of the stars in this game actually have this habitable zone. And you can actually display it by clicking view right here. And then going to show more. And then clicking on habitable zones uh, flat. There we go. So for Kepler-11, this is the habitable zone right here. And for our sun, it is right here where uh, both Earth and Mars are. So Earth is sort of on the inner border of the habitable zone and Mars is on the outer border of the habitable zone. So both of these planets can have liquid water. And for Mars, really the only problem is that the atmosphere is too low and the temperature is a little bit too cold. And before we go to Kepler-186f, let's take a look at Kepler-186e, the one that uh, was kind of relatively warm, but you can see that it's actually inside the red uh, part of the habitable zone, so if I were to zoom in on it, uh, even though it does have water, or it seems like it has water, because it has a higher water level in this game, uh, the temperature here is too hot. Uh, in this particular instance, it's actually 123 degrees Celsius, meaning that this is all going to be boiling hot for us to survive. Uh, and Kepler-186f is a little bit too cold. It's actually, the surface temperature right now is minus 94 degrees Celsius. And this is um, obviously an estimate. We're not really sure how cold or how warm it is. But one thing that we're kind of... Uh, interested in finding out is that whether it is actually tidally locked to its main star. So right here in this game, if you look closely, you'll notice that it turns as it passes around the uh, the star. In other words, it is tidally locked to the star, meaning that it always only has one side of its surface exposed to the sun. And this is actually not good because that means that this part right here is going to be ridiculously cold and this part right here is going to be ridiculously hot. This is not a place we want to be in because we can only really live right on, on, on this edge, sort of between the sun and the darkness. And currently, based on calculations, it's a 50-50 chance that maybe it is tidally locked, maybe it's not. Anyway, so let's disable the habitable zone areas right here so that we can actually uh, start terraforming this planet. So on the surface here, if you were to look into the sky and look at the star, you would actually uh, notice that it, it's not as bright as our sun. As a matter of fact, its brightness is about equivalent to the brightness of uh, the sun, maybe an hour after sunrise or... Uh, an hour before sunset. So it's actually relatively dim, even when it's right above us. So when it's on the horizon, if it's ever on the horizon, it's going to be also really, really dark. We also obviously don't know whether there is atmosphere or not, but we're going to make atmosphere because we want to terraform this world. So in this particular instance, 
this is not actually an accurate representation of its mass because it is currently made out of water but we're going to assume that just like earth it has uh, about 30 percent iron and a lot a lot a lot of silicates and we're just going to put a little bit of water on the surface because this is what we want to work with. We want to work with a planet that is terraformable and that may possibly sustain life and have liquid water on the surface. So I'm going to change its composition to about 30% iron, 69.8% uh, uh, silicates and 0.003% water. And we're going to add some organics just because we want some. And uh, here we go. So this is what we're working with. Now it's still very cold. So we need to figure out how we're going to terraform this. Assuming that it is inside the habitable zone, meaning that it can have liquid water and uh, that it also has some atmosphere that we can maybe uh, produce or eliminate by either using um, atmosphere extractor machines that will release air into the atmosphere or um, atmosphere binding machines that will actually uh, cause particles from the air to settle as like rock or something else. So let's just say we did that and we now change the atmospheric pressure to approximately 90% of atmosphere on the surface of our planet or on the surface of Earth. So this is what we now have. Now we now have enough atmosphere and enough of everything else to try to make this planet relatively warm and to melt all of this ice on the surface. Uh, before we continue, let's actually talk about Kepler-186, uh, 186, the star itself. So this star is also known as the M-class dwarf, and these are actually the most uh, common stars in our galaxy. So it's very likely that there's a lot more planets like Kepler-186f in our galaxy that have very similar composition, very similar orbit, and also very, very similar size. In other words, there's possibly quite a lot of these terrestrial planets that we might be able to land on in the future. But because this star is much smaller than our sun, uh, the distance between this star and Kepler-186f is only about anywhere between 0.2 and 0.4 astronomical units. So about 22% about or 40% of distance of Earth from our sun. But that's enough for it to be in the habitable zone because here obviously the, uh, the actual solar power is a lot less strong than uh, in our solar system because this is a much smaller star. So it really only receives about 32% of solar radiation compared to our planet Earth. And actually its orbit is comparable to the orbit of Mercury. So it's sort of the same distance from the star and has a relatively similar length for the year. But if its year is um, 130 days as we've calculated and it is tidally locked, that means that we will get 130 days of sunlight and uh, on this surface right here, and just judging by the size that we've observed uh, and assuming that the material composition is the same as our planet Earth, this planet would be about 1.4 mass of Earth. So we're actually going to change this right here. We're going to make it 1.4 masses of Earth because this would be a little bit more accurate. So it would be a little bit bigger than Earth and it would be a little bit massive. So the gravity here would be a little bit higher as well. And just like Mercury, uh, because it's so much closer to the star, it's very likely that its rotation is relatively slow as well. Uh, like Mercury and Venus, they have a relatively slow rotation, whereas Earth has a quick rotation. So uh, one day on Earth is only 24 hours, whereas on Venus, it's, um, it's many, many, many days long. So it's very likely that this planet also has a very slow day. So even if it's not tightly locked, it's very likely that the day and uh, night cycle here is really, really slow. So we will be getting days and days of sunlight and then days and days of darkness. And also it's really unknown whether this planet has uh, anything else, like for example, that it has a magnetosphere or not, but we're going to obviously give it one because we need that to survive. And whether it has things like seasons, because we don't really know what its tilt is, whether it gets different seasons depending on where it is uh, in its orbit. But what we do know about it is that its year is about 130 days long and it's very likely to be warm enough for us to comfortably live on it. Also, after the discovery of this planet in April of 2014, uh, the infamous SETI, or Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, uh, pointed its telescope at this planet, hoping to find some kind of a signal or maybe some kind of a communication with another species or another extraterrestrial life. But unfortunately, so far, we haven't really heard anything. Anyway, let's actually wait for it to warm up and see what it looks like when it's fully terraformed. And here we go, it's getting warmer and warmer. It seems to, uh, the ice seems to be melting and the clouds are appearing in the sky. And I think the temperature now is around 10-ish degrees Celsius. 
uh, I've increased the surface pressure to about 1.5 atmosphere because this this is a might, much larger planet, so it needs a little bit more atmosphere for uh, for it to actually receive more greenhouse effect. Uh, but looks like we've achieved the terraformability of this planet. So uh, let's go into the basics and see how much, oh sorry, not, not basics, materials, and let's see how similar it is to Earth. And look at that, Earth similarity 0.96, 96% similarity to Earth, and the li likelihood of life here is about 24, almost 25%. In other words, I've just turned this planet into something very similar to Earth, and that possibly one day might actually have life on it or might already have life on the surface. In other words, because of the location of this planet around Kepler-186 and because of its size and everything else, this is a very promising sign for us that maybe, just maybe, this has life or might have life or we might be the life on it one day. As long as, of course, its composition is mostly silicate uh, with 30% iron, some water on the surface, um, magnetosphere produced by the circulating iron in, on the inside, and atmospheric pressure of about 1 to 1.5 uh, atmospheres or Earth atmospheres. Now, one problem here, of course, is in one of the previous videos, I mentioned that the, one of the reasons Venus doesn't actually produce magnetosphere naturally is because it doesn't spin fast enough and it doesn't produce enough rotation so that its inner liquid iron starts circulating and producing the magnetosphere to protect it. And this of course implies that if Kepler-186f is not spinning enough or is tidally locked to the star, uh, it may also not have magnetosphere, which is a bad sign, which means that it might also not have any atmosphere similar to Mars and might not be as habitable as we hope it is. But if it's spinning fast enough, and specifically if uh, here I actually change this to about one rotational period per day, so uh, kind of similar to Earth. Uh, if it's spinning fast enough, it will produce its own magnetic field as long as there's molten iron on the inside. So it would then possibly have some sort of magnetosphere to protect itself from solar flares from the star. And anyway, so this is what this planet is like in a nutshell and what Kepler 816 solar system is like. Um, and right here, I actually just played around with the settings a little bit more and was able to achieve 96% Earth similarity, but also 67% likelihood of life by adding a little bit more water. So now, if this was in real life, there would be very likely to be life here at some point. At least some kind of a bacterial life or something that would be crawling on the surface of this planet. And in a nutshell, that is it. So hopefully one day we'll be able to reach this planet, even though it's 490 light years away from us. And maybe one day we'll be able to step our foot on this planet and and someone in the future might rewatch this video and go, hey, you were wrong about this and this and post it in the comment below. Or possibly I was right about something. Anyway, so we're going to be continuing this Kepler-186F exploration using a game called Planet Base that I just recently started playing. And there I'm exploring what it's like to colonize this planet from a perspective of an engineer by the name of Dimitri. Please enjoy that video as well and subscribe if you would like to see more space videos or talk more about space. And don't forget to post a comment. What do you think? Do you think one day we'll be able to reach this planet? And do you think it actually already has life on it? And if so, why? Why do you think so? Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll game you later. See you in the next video and bye bye.